Lincoln Avenue launched himself on an unlikely political career, a highly successful and professional career in the practice of law, and fulfilling opportunities of hope for others. Well done, John Credisco. Your hometown is proud of what you have accomplished. Let's welcome John. By the way, I did get the Afghan end picture with the Pope. So in this case, was it the little girl? It was a very true story, but I ended up with the Afghan. <laughs> so we were right. And, and he told me basically, for the rest of my life, I'm good. I don't, confession is not really necessary. <laughs> he got tired of hearing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I narrowed this speech down from 12 pages to four, so that I can at least make this brief. But I first want to congratulate uh, Benar Mazaki for such a beautiful building and the differences that he has made within the community itself in the other buildings, the Jefferson, the firehouse, and the vision that he had. And I don't think Bristol's ever looked better. So a tribute to Ralph D. Giuseppe and, and council for the vision that they've had for the town. You know, it was ironic today, um, I didn't know really what to do with myself and thinking about tonight and, and, and all the wonderful memories that I experienced as a child growing up in Bristol. So I went over to the gym, happened to run into my uh, grandchildren there, my four-year-old grandson and granddaughter. Um, and my grandson said, you know, Pop, you're going to come watch me swim. And I went in there and saw him swim, and he was doing the doggy paddle, and my granddaughter immediately dove in the water when I said, well, I understand, you know, having spent so much time in the Fifth Ward pool, that my granddaughter got my jeans, and we're still trying to figure out where my grandson fits with the doggy paddle. And my daughter was here, I hope that improves. But the, uh, at the gym, I was just shooting some baskets, had not had a time to do that because of uh, two shoulder injuries. And, Lo and behold, Mark Schweiker's son comes over and we're just chatting and shooting and these young kids come over and they said, listen, we have seven of us, we need an eighth. And Mark's son said, well, I'm leaving. So the young 16-year-old looks at me and says, can you play? At which point Mark's son said, he's from Bristol. Are you kidding me? Can they play? And we played. But to me, wherever I go, if people ask me, where are you from? I proudly say Bristol. I'm so sure everyone in this room feels the same way. Bristol is a special place. As a child, we got a chance to roam the streets and went from friend's house to friend's house without any fear. Our parents, very, locked the, very seldom locked the doors on their homes. No one had a security system. You're always welcome at each other's house, whether it was for lunch, for dinner. You know, I'm sad that I can't tell my grandchildren about that experience, for that's something they will never have the benefit of today, unfortunately. But the memories, as special as they are. You know, I remember going to kindergarten and there being 105 of us and one nun. <laughs> and how she had complete control is still a marvel to this day. I think the baseball bat probably had a little bit of <laughs> um, And having a chance to, to meet my first friends just talking to Mario Cayon, who's here today. Our first day of school, we became friends because we looked at each other and everyone else in the room was crying. And we looked at each other and said, right, we don't know why they're crying. And I said, Mario, don't worry about it. I got this thing handled. I have the whole nun thing. We're good. 
which allowed me to steal cupcakes out of his lunch bag where I sat behind him for several years thereafter. <laughs> but when you went from home to home, and I, and I started just to think of those experiences, you know, when I would go to Dave Ciccoletti's house and have spaghetti and crabs, you know, and realizing that his father was the first one to teach me how to catch a crab. We were to go into Mike Missinelli's house and walk in and smell meatballs, and all I had to say was I was hungry, and immediately his mom would, the meat, you know, meatballs were on the stove, or whether I wanted mac and beans, which my family still eats today. There were Bobby Segola's house, where there was a deli next door. He always loved going to his house because it was like great. You just go from one room to the other, and you got a bologna and mustard sandwich and those great vanilla Oreo cookies that to this day I still crave. Where can you get that anywhere else? You're learning how to drive it in Donnie Pitalillo's backyard. He was the first one to have a gas go-kart. <laughs> and him defended me as I went almost through the fence and because I didn't know how to work the brakes. Those memories are just incredibly priceless. Or having the benefit of a youth league, those coaches that gave so much of their time. You know, the Louis Persichettis, the Artie Connelline seniors, just so many of those guys that were there for us as kids. You know, where I get to meet Joey Kervick, who played for Moose, and beat Mike Missinelli's. Stoneback Lumber Team. We see Johnny Kazmiri, who was through really hard as a kid. He just hoped we just able to hit the ball. Or when we played basketball on Junior Fields' this Hall. You know, the teams were Army, Navy, Harvard. I had no shot at that team. <laughs> but, uh, you know, guys like Pete Mancini got their first attempts to play at that league. Mario, Michael. Lenny, myself, growing up with guys like Johnny Cirelli across the street as kids from one house to the other. Louis Gazzarano being petrified to stay in his house. <laughs> <laughs> he scared the hell out of me. <laughs> And then as you move on, you know, in life, going on to high school and meeting a new set of friends. You know, Greg Pinelli, Mike McCready, Andrew Quarles, all the guys that we played, Van Lamb, ninth grade basketball, Mario, Mike, Lenny. They were priceless. But I have to tell you, there are other heroes in my life, other people that came into my life that I look up to who, as heroes, who have made me look at life differently as we approach a different time in our life. These are people that I believe define character because they do these things when no one else is looking and no one else is thinking about it. You know, people like my good friend Mike Missinelli who uses a sports radio show to fight racism and prejudice at the risk of losing those folks that are listening to that show. He doesn't say it, but I grew up with him and know him well enough to know that that's an assault. Or Rosemary and Carol Mignone, who every Sunday gave music to St. Anne's Church to such a point that even to today, I just started voice lessons just because of their influence. Every day, every Sunday, they were there as an example. Someone who's not here with me tonight, who I love dearly. 
Mike Manto, who I can't even imagine today as a parent losing one child, but to lose two, and to continue with service is something that is beyond my comprehension. I love you, Mike. Mario Cayon, quiet, incredible person. Lost his father when we were kids. Struggled with a mom who faced illness after illness. Lost a wife, but struggled to still raise two sons, never wanting sympathy, just showing what a man should do. Or Bobby Deli, who flew to China to give a little girl a better life. Nikki Marino, Bobby Angelaccio, who sacrificed their lives to care for their mother day in and day out, bathing, feeding, clothing. My brother David, who cares for someone that's not a relative, who faces serious illness, who has so little but gives so much. Sharon Edmondson Cordisco, my childhood sweetheart, the mother of my children, and my good friend, who, as a teenager, married another teenager, and the two of us struggled. But she stayed there and sacrificed herself, far brighter than me, second in her class, to give three beautiful children a better life. Kelly, John, Nicole. If that wasn't enough, she cares for my grandson Kyle and has done so since he was little. Never looking for an applaud. Ironically enough, Sharon wanted to uh, teach children with special needs. My grandson Kyle, who opened up a whole new world for me of children so special that I had no idea, no comprehension of what their world was like. I saw him endure surgery, therapy, and continue to move on. He's now at Bucks County Community College and told me the other day while we we're going to therapy that he took a test that said he had a 90% chance of being president. I, I told him when you're at 99%, give me a call. <laughs> but because of him, Yes, Have a Heart was created with a bunch of wonderful people that we provided a special needs camp two parks, and provide financial assistance to those families that are struggling with the cost of caring for such special children. I'll share with you just one story. I was at the, at the gym in my grandson's summer camp and a bunch of special children in the pool. And I have to tell you, I didn't know how to act. I didn't know what to do. So as I stood by the pool, petrified to jump in, I didn't know to, how to take that first step. And my grandson was swimming, and all these kids were having a great time, most of them with autism. And one little boy looked up and said to me, just jump in. I jumped in and it was the best swim I ever had in my entire life. And then, there are two special people. My mother and my father. My mom's 83, she's here tonight, and my dad's 89. My mother is, probably, is without a doubt the most selfless, loving, trusting person I've ever met. She epitomizes the word sacrifice. My father, 
never missed or never took a sick day in his life. Every morning, I still remember him getting up six o'clock in the morning and driving four of his riders to Philadelphia to work back, dropping me off sometimes in the morning to serve as an altar boy. It provided all of us, my siblings are here tonight, David, Joanne, Marky, Marion, put a roof over our heads, food on the plate, and didn't ask for an applause. Forty years of his life, day in, day out, still caring for his family today at the age of 99. I truly believe that this honor you give me tonight is not necessarily one that I can accept as an individual. Because I've been so fortunate to have so many wonderful people from Bristol in my life. You have shaped my life. And any good that I have done is because of you. So tonight, I thank you, I love you, and I salute you. God bless.